equal sign. Are you ready, dude? Okay. <laughs> waiting for you, waiting for go. All right, thank you everybody for coming out to the Stanford I.O. Meetup. Uh, tonight we are hosting uh, WebRTC, presented by Lisa Kelly, a good friend of mine from way back in the day. And um, we're very excited to have you guys out tonight. This is also a good night. Hopefully we'll have more people than we have ever before. We have more RSVPs than before, so hopefully tonight's a big night for a turnout and everything. Um, if you guys are new to the Stanford I.O. Meetup, I see a lot of new faces. Um, what we're doing is we're trying to promote a technology culture here in Stanford, so a place where people in technology can come, meet, talk about tech, um, associate with people who live and breathe this stuff and just enjoy technology. And uh, We don't really have a lot of that going on. I know there's a lot of people that I work with that are constantly saying, you know, I wish there was some place where you know, people can just get together and either talk technology or play around with different things and share things they've been working on. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Uh, every Tuesday night up in the courtroom, uh, we have the office hours where you can just walk in if you have a problem, if you have something you're working on, something you want to share, ask questions about. Um, we do that every Tuesday. So it's right here in the Innovation Center, same night, same place. Um, so what we'll do to start is we'll just go around the room, we'll give everybody a chance to introduce themselves, uh, just give us your name, uh, what you do, and one of the, why you're coming out to this day for 10 minutes the uh, meetup tonight, what you're kind of interested in, um, in terms of technology and, and what come to the meetup you're looking for. So, um, I'm going to start with Zeeshan. <laughs> I'll let you set it, start it off. Hi everybody, I'm Zeeshan. Uh, my background is in web application development. I'm a full stack developer. Uh, started with PHP, well, before that, I started with whatever. I've touched a little bit of everything, Visual Basic for DOS, Turbo Pascal. Ruby. Most recently, I'm working with, uh, at a company, a health tech company that does Ruby. Uh, my interests are broad. Uh, I like to play with every technology I can. Um, my interest here is to help build a community. Uh, I've been doing this for about three years. We started with JavaScript and PHP. We sort of consolidated the groups, and we're trying to bring in and whatever interests you have. We'll bring in speakers, and we'll have talks about it. And just engage with us. Let us know what you want to hear about. So. I'm 
Joe, I work at uh, Condé Nast Publications. I'm a platform engineer. Uh, used to do a lot of Java stuff. Lately, been doing a lot of uh, Node.js and uh, MongoDB, and uh, working a little bit on some front-end Angular stuff. But uh, just kind of wanted to see uh, WebRTC. Uh, I played around a little bit with WebSocket, so I wanted to see how that relates. My name is Pablo. I work for New Vision Systems up in New Canaan. I'm a C Sharp uh, .NET developer right now. I'm looking to uh, somehow uh, add uh, real-time communication to our product that we offer, so that's why I'm really interested in seeing this uh, this time. Oh, and I do do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rachel. I'm not a developer, actually. I'm an editor for a site called WebRTC World. It's uh, actually right there in Norwalk. So we'll have to just come out and see who's in the industry, what people want to know, what they want to learn, and I also like to learn. Um, and we also host and vet WebRTC World. We put it on twice a year, so the next one is coming up in June in Atlanta, and we have all of the pioneers in WebRTC, uh, Google, Mozilla, all the browsers, and everyone, so just keeping up with the industry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kate Suti, and I'm a web developer of MySQL and VB.net, the Renaissance Capital. I'm new to WebRTC, and I'm going to learn about uh, HTML5. What a uh, rebel. <laughs> I was a developer for several years when I was young, like several of you. Uh, I then moved up in Manhattan and in St. Peter, Microsoft, City Group, and a few other companies, several startups that were brought out. I currently work as an advisor, mentor, and sometimes advisor to startups around here. And my hobby, which I do quite a bit of, is uh, development for my own pleasure. And like uh, uh, my colleague here, we're both directors of Fairfield County and County Makersfield for the Makerspace over in uh, Norway. Way to conform, oh, dude. Hi, <laughs> I'm Ed Kalen. In an earlier lifetime, I uh, did a lot of programming with Flash Media specifically. I designed and then built a two way uh, internet legal deposition system complete with. Uh, reservation system using uh, first Flash Common and then Flash Media Server written in ActionScript on the host as well as ActionScript on the client. So I, I have a lot of background in the predecessor to WebRTC and I want to understand more about it to see if I have any opportunities for building on my previous knowledge to hopefully earn some income from that. So that's uh, other than that, I, I do spend a lot of time at the Fairfield County Maker Skill Maker Space, teaching Arduino classes and working with Raspberry Pis and things like that. So he's the only one here to make money. <laughs> he's the only one here who missed me. <laughs> uh, my name is Will. I do uh, digital marketing. I'm just here to learn a little more about HTML development and uh, try to teach myself. So I hope this isn't too much over my head. But, uh, Pleasure to I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Jeff Fox. I'm one of the co-organizers of the Stanford I.O. Meetup. I've been doing development for about 16 to 17 years. Um, I currently work at Starwood Hotels, with Paul, as you mentioned. I'm the digital experience tech lead over there, so my domain happens to be everything front-end related, HTML, JavaScript, any kind of technologies like that, Angular JS, backend JS. Um, all the front-end technologies and how we're going to use them and where we're going and all those kind of things. So, uh, WebRTC is a real exciting technology. Um, doing anything with HTML5 real-time in the browser uh, is very interesting and exciting, so I thought this would be a really good meetup for everybody to get some good information. Uh, Lisa has a lot of background in technology and teaching and instruction and stuff like that, so I think you guys are in for a very good presentation tonight. So I'll uh, turn it over to Lisa. and. So um, I am Larson Kelly, uh, also Summary NYC on Twitter, um, and I have, uh, like my friend Ed over here, a lot of experience with uh, the predecessor to WebRTC, Flash um, Communication Server, um, Flash Media Server, and so on. So I was really excited to see uh, WebRTC growing and, and having it um, built up as an open source project. So. Um, we could do a lot of the things that we were able to do with Flash 
now um, across many browsers. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about um, getting people started with this technology because when I started with it, um, there was really no bridge. It was just you know, 100 miles an hour. You're, either you're uh, just a telecom engineer that's getting into all of this stuff and you can dive right into the, uh, the spec and get started, or you're just staring at these, tu these tutorials, like if, where do I begin? There's servers involved, where are all these pieces? How does it all fit together? Um, so I've kind of taken it on uh, to translate some of that stuff and get people started. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. Um, and another thing, uh, and I'll tie this one together, don't worry, but another thing that I'm passionate about right now is uh, the Spartan race. I signed myself up for a Spartan race, June 1st. Is anybody else doing the Spartan race? All right. It's my first yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's my first one. I haven't even run a 5K, and I think I'm going to do this thing, right? But, um, so just to give you, get you in the mood here, it's got a uh, short video. <laughs> We all yell out Sparta. <laughs> Grab one or two of those on the way out. And 
So all you really need uh, to So all you need to uh, develop WebRTC really is your core programming skills. Um, HTML, CSS, um, some JavaScript of course, and um, an HTML editor, uh, webcam and microphone so you can test everything out, and the latest build of Chrome or Firefox. And we'll get into where it's supported and where it isn't. Um, but I recommend um, Chrome for development, and uh, I'll show you some of the reasons why. So let's get dive right in. What is WebRTC? WebRTC is a set of APIs that enables video, audio, and data communication right in the browser without any plugins. So it's native right in the browser. Of course, it's still in development right now. Um, so you are all very early to the game, which is good. Um, so things will change. So some of the code examples I show you, some of the API, it's gonna, it's gonna shift over time. Um, but just knowing that, uh, what can we do today? And there are some examples that I can show you. And this is one that um, is the first thing if you go to play with WebRTC, this is the one that Google puts up that you can play around with this uh, open source code. And um, it basically it grabs your webcam. It's going to be weird because I'm looking back at the screen. <laughs> um, anybody can go to that URL at the bottom and join this room with me um, as long as they're in Chrome or Firefox, either on a desktop or a browser. And somebody's going to try to do it again. <laughs> um, and I usually, I, uh, I bought a Nexus tablet specifically to play around with this and, and to show, and I forgot it at home. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, anybody can just jump into this room, into this room, and uh, it's basically you know it's really good quality. It's like the Skype right in the browser. Um, Sorry, this room is full. Anybody uh, else joining? Okay, this one is more of a commercial service. That was sort of a proof of concept. This is talkie. And you can do a few other things with this one, like name your room. Um, so. And this, and this one has some sample. You know, this is all free, but it's got a lot of other things. You can lock the room and have a password. Um, there's chat. You can even uh, play, a little, oops, play a little game down here while you're waiting. turn off your uh, speakers when you are testing these things. That's that one. And then Zingaya. Zingaya. I never get that one. This one um, allows you to just do a voice. So you can embed a link in your web page and have it call any landline phone, cell phone, call center. Um, it's just a link that you put in your page. And it's a service. You could also you know, dive in and build something like this yourself. Because on the back end, WebRTC can integrate with telecom, um, with SIP and telecom, and send text messages and do all of that stuff. Um, well, that's what this service does. And of course, that one's not free because you're paying for all that back end stuff that's happening. Um, and then, this one is very interesting. Um, it's. Uh, not just voice and video, but also data. So um, what this does is it provides collaborative, da down collaborative downloading service for your site. So you could go to the site, and anyone else um, that comes as well will be could, you know, could be downloading the assets of that site from you as a peer. It's all peer to peer. And um, this particular service is not optimized for the screen size. 
<laughs> but um, so that's the, that's the big thing about WebRTC is it's peer to peer. So it can take the load off of the servers. Um, and this service claims it can uh, eliminate, uh, bring your load down to 92% um, just using peer to peer to deliver this content. Do you want to take a moment to increase your resolution? security reasons, WebRTC is going to ask me to before it accesses my webcam. Some of those other sites didn't ask me that because I had been there before and set a cookie. Um, but this is a security thing, so you can see up at the very top that gray bar. Very easy to miss, so you front-end people are going to have to make sure there's something pointing to that or the screen grays out or something to really show um, people that they need to click that allow button. And of course in Firefox it's on the other side. <laughs> But um, I will allow. So who's going to come up? I nominate this guy. Okay, come on up. I'm going to call it Oh, he's so pretty. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Before WebRTC, as we talked about, there was um, 
You know, back in 91, there was the first Boy, Boy for Voice over IP application. Um, then in 99, we had XMPP Jabber, things like that started to evolve. And then in 2002, um, there was Flash Communication Server. And that one um, really revolutionized um, you know, grabbing a webcam. Just everything was so much easier to do. You didn't have to have a Java applet and you know, all of these things. It was just right there for you. And programming was relatively easy. <laughs> we banged our heads against the wall a lot, but um, but anybody could get started with it. And it was you know it was really cool. And it really got me excited about video on the web. Um, and you know I really dove into it and I um, wrote a book on flash or on flash video um, a while back. <laughs> and uh, it just really um, it kind of democratized the uh, real-time communication. That's how I felt about it. Um, and I went ahead and uh, did a startup back in the day um, called the iFox Cam. And I built this thing right from scratch myself in the summer. And uh, the idea was that it was uh, kind of a nanny cam before nanny cams were big. <laughs> and um, we did actually deploy this in a test market in California in daycare centers, and it worked out really well. Um, however, um, it, uh, when we started to roll it out, it, we realized that the numbers just didn't add up. Because with Flash, you had to spend $4,500 per server, and you didn't know how many servers you needed, because every stream was different, depending on how much movement was in the stream, the bandwidth was different, and that's how they priced it. And it was really frustrating, and um, and ultimately it did not work um, because the licensing, the numbers just didn't add up for us. Um, so I think open source is good. <laughs> I think um, the the fact that WebRTC is open source and free and anybody can use it is fantastic. Of course, there are services that are now being built that you can you know, buy to make things easier, but you don't have to. So uh, WebRTC itself, um, back in 2010, the summer of 2010, engineers from Google, Microsoft, Skype, Ericsson, Mozilla, and Apple all had an informal lunch to discuss the possibilities of supporting real time right in the browser. And they decided, yes, we should do this. So they started a working group. And, um, uh, and began working on it. Um, of course, uh, there, you know, not everybody was fully engaged in that working group. Um, Apple and Microsoft are not in the working or well, we're not in the initial working group. Apple joined um, back in February, very quietly. They didn't tell anybody about it, um, but they are in the working group. And also, just um, a few weeks ago, Microsoft joined. There's sort of this informal um, kind of UN type group that uh, isn't the working group, but it's a, they're meeting to talk about um, about working together and, and getting it working in IE. Because Microsoft has their own ideas about um, how the spec should be structured at a very basic level and. Um, they're going to have to figure out a way to work together because the time is right. So shortly after all of this, Google acquired a company called Global IP Solutions, or GIPS. And um, they have the low-level technology that powers things like Skype and um, real-time communication for AOL and Google and so on. Um, and then they turned around and open source all of the components. They stripped out anything that had um, any IP on it, which includes codecs, of course, um, and then just open sourced it. <clears throat> so anytime you bring up codecs, it starts to get a little dicey. Um, so long story short, there's a codec war going on, which codec is going to be supported in WebRTC. Um, of course, Google wants VP8, and everybody else wants H.264. <laughs> So, um, oh, H.264 is patent encumbered, um, so that is the big argument that Google has against it. 
just to make things even more interesting, um, back in November, Cisco came out and said, don't worry about that. We will pay for any future patent, any future uh, licensing costs for H.264. Just use it. And um, everybody's like, really? <laughs> um, but uh, that should take away any argument and just, let's just use H.264. But um, there's still people that, are, that don't really trust it and Google's still fighting. So unfortunately, it hasn't solved it yet. So that leads us to where it's supported today. Um, right now, uh, VP8 is supported by Google and Chrome, and uh, everyone else want, uh, supports H.264, or wants to. <laughs> um, there is the option to leave it codec agnostic, but we'll see what happens there. So Chrome and Firefox now support most of WebRTC. And Opera support, or I'm sorry, the Chrome and Firefox supports all of WebRTC. Opera supports most of WebRTC. And Apple is not really saying anything, but it's not getting involved. Um, there's no Apple, there's no WebRTC support in Safari right now. Um, and then we have Microsoft, who is also waiting um, to support. And you know, they may do the same thing that they did with SVG, there might be a plugin available, or there's all sorts of possibilities. So um, uh, don't worry. Um, and just to keep an eye on what, what supported where, uh, this website is webrtcreadyyet.com. It is a great resource. You can just go there and uh, they've got charts about uh, what supported where and all of that. Um, and of course, I said Firefox and Chrome both support it, but they have different syntax. So um, you will need to use uh, some sort of polyfill adapter JS. Um, by, uh, Google has um, put out adapter JS and that kind of normalizes all of that. So um, you'll see that in the code. So right about now, you might be feeling like this. <laughs> Do I really want to get into this? I don't know. Well. Um, there is hope, I know, everybody's working on standards, and there's a really big reason to do that, because the potential of WebRTC is huge. There are um, over one billion reasons to support WebRTC. Uh, there's one billion endpoints right now um, that support WebRTC today, and that's phones, tablets, um, you know, computers, all waiting for the killer WebRTC app, right? So, how can it be deployed? If you want to dive into this, how, how do you deploy it? You could do it with a service approach. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are services out there for um, the server side of things and all the pieces. Um, there's also frameworks, which we'll talk about. Um, or if you want to get in there, the API is there for you. And you can just dive in and, um, and build something completely from scratch. to actually build in your app. Um, you don't have to start from scratch. There are many frameworks available today, probably many more tomorrow. <laughs> um, but some of the more popular ones are PeerJS, uh, Simple WebRTC, EasyRTC, and so on. And if you're, um, uh, if you're on Node, if you're working with Node, you might want to look at RTC.io. Uh, that's a Node toolbox for building WebRTC apps. Um, and then if you need to integrate with um, the telecom side, there's PSTN and frameworks as well um, that will allow you to, to do that more easily. And uh, later on, we're going to build a quick video chat app using Simple WebRTC. That's the one that I, um, that I recommend. It's really fast to get started with that. It's um, very cool the way they have it set up with uh, plugins. So you can just piece, or modules, you can just piece what you want together. And if you really want to get up and running quickly, um, say you want to use one of these services for, um, for your team or something like that, there, there are plenty available. Um, just that free app, app RTC that I showed you, you can just use that sort of as a free, you know, in the browser kind of Skype alternative. And there are 
also some services and platforms that are uh, make it really easy to build the building blocks to put it all together. Um, Talkbox is one that has a pretty big developer community around it. Video um, and RTIO and Xerces has a whole hosted server infrastructure. They're actually um, associated with Influxus, which was familiar with <laughs> Influxus. So it's the Influxus guys that are that have put this together. Um, they they were hosting for um, well they still do for Flash apps. So for a higher level understanding, how is a WebRTC app structured? What are the parts that make it up? So in a perfect world, you've got one browser connecting to another browser, peer-to-peer, -peer, no plugins, no servers in between, right? Um, it can work this way in a perfect world on the same land, but in the real world, um, we do need some help. So you need a server that's going to be able to introduce those peers together. Um, and you need a signaling server. And this could be hosted on the same server that served the web page or a completely different server. And what this does is it performs a handshake, gets the client, one client's information, passes it to the other one, um, you know, finds them on the network, what is their uh, video and audio capabilities, passes all that information back and forth between the two peers so that they can connect. And then once that happens, it steps out of the way they're connected. Now that's with two clients. If you have more than two, you, um, you need to look at different topologies or different organizations. Um, full mesh is one where you have, say you have three people that want to connect. The signaling server will, uh, everyone will reach out to the signaling server and then it will introduce each of the peers to each other and you've got this whole mesh of connections. Now, as you can imagine, that can be pretty bandwidth intensive. Um, if you're just on one, uh, you know, regular, um, regular internet connection, that's three video. Especially if it's, you know, high quality video, that's a lot of bits to send back and forth. So you're probably going to max out um, at three to four people. And Google has figured out a way to really optimize this. That's why in their Hangouts, which also uses WebRTC, um, you can have up to ten people in there. Uh, so, and also they, they do little tricks like make the person who's speaking bigger and everybody else smaller <clears throat> and that helps with the bandwidth. So there are lots, there's some little tricks that you can do. <coughs> now as I said, you can connect with um, the telecom networks and so on. You can connect with all sorts of things. Um, device to device, you can uh, connect with mobile phones, tablets, SIP clients, Jingle clients. All sorts of things on the back end, all through this API. <clears throat> but if it's peer to peer, why do we need servers? Well, unfortunately, um, we're on networks. Um, networks that have firewalls, and uh, it's not so easy to get through, and um, uh, it's not so easy to get through and just connect peer to peer. We've got locked down internal networks and all sorts of things. Um, so that's why we need these strange things called stun, turn, and ice. <laughs> um, let's see how these three things work together to actually get people connected. So here we have Jane and John. Jane is behind a firewall. And she has no way to know her external address on this network, right? Um, she only knows her internal IP. So when John, <clears throat> she sends that to John, and he tries to call it, he can't reach her. Um, it's kind of like sending a letter through the mail with just a street address on it, no city state. Um, so she needs to reach out to a stun server, which acts much like uh, what's my IP? Com, that service where it finds out or it lets you know where your IP address is. Um, she'll reach out to that server, it'll give that information back to her. She can then send that to John and he can connect. He'll do the same thing and they have a peer to peer connection. This is called hole punching. But it doesn't always get through those roadblocks. Um, there's high security networks 
mobile carriers, all sorts of things that might be in the way. Sometimes stun isn't enough to get through. So that's where turn comes in. And turn, or traversal using relays over NAT, um, it acts as a relay server. So it never really steps out of the way. The data is always flowing through it. Now, um, the spec says that it just flows through it. It's not recorded, but we all know about the NSA, so. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's supposed to just flow through without any, uh, without the server actually recording it. Now, all of this adds latency. WebRTC was not designed in the beginning to be able to handle this kind of try and fail and try the next thing um, kind of thing, and that's where ICE comes in. So ICE will um, kind of adapt and keep trying different connections until it finds one. Now, before, before ICE, you would have to actually start a whole new session if you uh, it's done failed. So, um, so ICE makes things much more efficient. <coughs> so how ICE works. Uh, Jane and John have a variety of um, potential connection addresses, right? Uh, transport addresses, which is the IP address in their port. Uh, they've got a local, local IP, they've got the uh, translated address, uh, the external IP on the public side of the net. Um, and then they have a relay address from a turn server. So ideally, one of these is going to work, right? And ICE will systematically test each one until it find one, finds one that does work. And these are called ICE candidates. Now, this is all fine and good, all these servers, but how are these addresses actually passed if they have, don't have a connection yet, right? They haven't actually connected. Um, you need to um, create, you need to set up a signaling server. And it's a low latency communication channel that allows these two peers to pass this information back. And this is, um, WebRTC does not care what you use for, us for signaling. You could do um, you know, send something over chat, you could send it in an email, you could send smoke signals, it just doesn't care. You can use any technology. Um, now, outside of smoke signals, you can use any of these and more. Um, these are the most commonly used signaling channels. So, HTTP POST, a simple HTTP POST, um, XHR polling, SMTP Jabber, uh, there are JavaScript SIP libraries, there's tons of, you know, we can use WebSockets. You know, there's tons of different ways to do it. It's really your choice, and it depends on the kind of app you're building, what your systems already look like, and what you need to create with. Now, I can't just leave you with that. Um, give you some, some, at least some uh, recommendations. Um, if you're doing server to browser, socket IO with Node is used a lot. Um, And for server-to-server -server communication, SIP with WebSockets is usually recommended. SIP is, you know, it's been around forever, it's standards-based, and um, it's somewhat easy to extend SIP apps to the web using, this, using WebSockets. By this time, you're probably feeling like this. <laughs> and uh, now we're getting to the web the API. This is what it looks like, the real thing. Ready to look at it. There are three APIs in the, the uh, WebRTC APIs. Um, MediaStream handles the webcam and microphone. RTC Peer Connection handles the, it's the guts of WebRTC. It handles almost everything else. Uh, bandwidth management, encryption, um, you know, the actual connection, connection of the peers and so on. And then RTC data channel is um, just a generic channel to ch exchange data using that same peer connection. And a question that I often get um, with RTC data channel is, what's the difference between this and WebSockets? Why would you want to use one over the other? 
and um, WebSockets is, or RTC Data Channel is peer-to-peer, -peer, so it's potentially faster. That would be the reason. Um, but as you'll see, I don't really recommend starting with that right now, but we'll get to that. I'm going to go over each one individually. So of those three APIs, you're probably most familiar with MediaStream. It's also known as Get, Get User Media, and that's what grabs the webcam. And like. Once you have a media stream, you can uh, play it locally, either in a media element, or you can connect it to a RTC peer connection and send it out to a peer. And a media stream object is made up of one or more media stream tracks. And those tracks can contain multiple channels, and that's generally going to be a left and right channel for stereo, in most cases. Um, so you can have more than one track, say for languages or whatever, in one stream. You can fire events on that media stream. So you can listen for um, when the stream ends, um, if tracks have been added, and so on. Um, there's also a 36 character ID that you can use to address the media stream. And there are other uh, events started, ended, muted, and so on that you can use to, you know, if you want to adjust the UI, whatever you need to do. And there are also, it also can exist in two states, live or muted. And muted just means that there's no data being received on it. And this is uh, on the track itself. Okay. And I do have an example that I, I included the code for this. I'm not going to dive into it tonight, but I'm going to um, show you the example of running. So in this case, I'm just grabbing uh, the camera. I'm just grabbing the um, video, putting it into a media element, and just kind of tracing out these element, or these uh, attributes of the stream. So, in the code, you'd be able to see how I was able to grab those things and just put them in there. So, it is a video, it's live, and so on. <clears throat> so that'll give you a starting place to start playing around with this, with the media element. Close that. Then we've got the RTC peer connection. It's the real engine of WebRTC. Under the hood, it's doing all of this. <laughs> now, this is abstracted, so you don't have to worry about most of the stuff that's going on over here, like echo cancellation, video jitter buffer, multiplexing, blah, blah, blah. All sorts of things happening that, um, that you don't have to worry about, thank goodness. But there is a lot going on under the hood. So here's an API level view of how a peer connection is set up. So the first thing you do is access the local webcam and mic. Then you'll set up a signaling channel so you can negotiate the peer connection. Then you'll set up a new RTC peer connection. And once that is set up, you'll attach the media to the connection so you can send it out to your peer. You'll exchange session descriptions. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet. yet. Um, session descriptions, or SDPs, are basically a big chunk of text that tells the other peer what um, your cap video capabilities are, um, if you're on a mobile device, what um, your limitations are, what kind of video you can receive, that kind of thing, um, what codec you, you can support, all sorts of things. Um, and it can get pretty complicated. Um, but the API writes that chunk of text for you, so you don't have to worry about it. And then you are connected with your peer. So 
So just to give you an idea of what an SDP looks like. If you ever have to worry about it, there's a site that you have to go to um, if you're going to work with WebRTC called WebRTC Hacks. Um, tons of information on this blog. And they, uh, they have this thing. And, uh, it's going to be hard to read with my uh, resolution. But then this is, um, all of this is the SDP. There's tons of stuff that makes no sense, like variables called A, and a bunch of variables called A. <laughs> so that's not very helpful. Um, so basically what they do is, um, over here, they tell you what it is. So they're just decoding that whole SDP for you. So if you ever have any trouble, if you ever have to dive into this thing, they figured it out. So it's a cool thing to have. And I do have a page that has all of these resources and everything on it. I'll give you the link at the end. So, so that was the over, overall flow of uh, peer connection. So let's look at the peer connection object itself. Um, when you're instantiating, you have to pass in one variable that's required, and that's configuration. Um, and in the configuration, you're going to pass in one or more ISO arrays. And an ISO array is a list of servers that you're going to use to try to connect. So it would be a stun server, a turn server, or multiple of each if you want to have some fallback. Um, you can also pass in some constraints, say if you only want to send video or only want to send audio, uh, max resolution, things like that. Um, and if you're testing on a local network, you can just pass in null here, but you have to pass in something. And this is what it would actually look like. So, um, and these are servers that actually work. Google has a couple of public stun servers that you can use for development. I don't recommend relying on them much, but they're really good just to get started. So you don't have to go set up a stun server or get a service. You just use this one. And um, turn is, uh, there's also a free t a turn server as well <clears throat> that's available. And you have to pass in your username and password with that. So you'll have to figure out a way to encrypt that or pass it in so it's not just in clear text. That's up to you. <laughs> Um, so again, I gave you an example of that um, in the code examples. But this is what it looks like. Play around with it. And what I did was just grab the same camera um, and connect it twice. So. Um, so this one doesn't use any signaling. It's not actually connecting peer to peer. It's just reusing my SDP and reusing my peer. Just to strip it down so you can play around with it. Okay. And then we have the third API, which is RTC Data Channel. And this is RTC Data Connection. RTC data channel. There it is. <laughs> um, so it really is for fast and efficient exchange of data. That's what it, it is great for. So it's great for multiplayer games, text chat, um, file, even file transfer you can use it for. Um, it's basically the same API as WebSockets. So that makes it pretty easy to, um, to translate over. Um, it supports strings as well as some J uh, JavaScript binary types, and um, it is uh, it, it is encrypted with DTLS. So um, everything in WebRTC is required to be encrypted. So, um, it has built-in features like congestion control and things like that are built right into the API. And if you care about protocols, it's the SCTP protocol that's um, that it's going over. <coughs> And of course, SCTB, um, that can be uh, reliable or unreliable. So you could be using UDP or, or um, TCP, you choose. So you can use it for file sharing. There's a site called sharefest.me. And um, basically it just has a, uh, I could show it to you, but it's just a box. <laughs> you go to the website, it's just a box. 
and you just drag a file from your file system right there, and it pops up with a link. You can give that link to anybody, and they'll be able to access that file from your hard drive. Pretty cool. <laughs> just peer to peer, as long as you, you, know, you have to stay on the site, I believe. But um, it uh, it does work with Chrome, Firefox, and Opera interoperably, so it's pretty cool. So you know, you can use this for a lot more than just to kill Skype. There's a lot of other creative uses for WebRTC. Um, another use was uh, what I mentioned before, the distributed, con distributed content delivery. Um, Pure CDN uses that, and um, also a site called Pure 5. And um, uh, Pure CDN was actually recently acquired by Yahoo. So again, I don't think they're not even operational anymore. I think it just says acquired by Yahoo. <laughs> so Yahoo's interested in this kind of uh, the delivery for their data. So this is how a data channel would be instantiated. So it's on the peer, on your peer connection, create data channel, and give it a label. That's it. Um, for a code example, um, Sam Dutton uh, has created a super simple implementation of it. Um, it's a chat app, and he gives all the code. So it's a great place to start if you want to play around with with uh, data channels. And you know this, this particular API is really in flux right now. So um, you know I recommend in other oh, stuff link to his example. But <clears throat> and I'll give you all these things at the end, so don't worry. So real world deployment for now, I would start with I would stick with WebSockets for the moment. That might change in a few weeks, might change in a month, but I would start with WebSockets. Um, just for compatibility issues, and um, and then you know when when RTC data channel is ready, then you can uh, transfer it over from that point. Because they basically have the same API, uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to migrate over. So those were the WebRTC APIs, um, and of course you can choose to dive into those and build something completely from scratch. Um, but more than likely, you're going to want to use one of the frameworks. And the one that I like to use is Simple Web RTC. Um, it was built by a guy who was deep in Flash Media Server world, and it's now transitioned. So he's got a lot of experience with um, structuring real-time apps, and um, so it's really a great, uh, great little framework to play around with and see how easy it is to build an app with it. We're going to build a multi-party chat room. And uh, it's, you know, the UI could use a little bit of work, but this is what it looks like. Um, I actually was testing it one night. Um, it's my husband in the middle who was in the other room. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's my sister and her husband. Um, I, I just needed somebody to test this with me, so I texted her. And she said, yeah, we both have our computer. It was a Friday night. She said, we both have our computers with us. We're at Buffalo Wild Wings, but you know. And they uh, they both logged in, and we all saw each other, and it was pretty cool. It all worked. Um, so with um, with Simple Web RTC, you can uh, use their modular framework to just piece together the parts that you need. Uh, for example, they've got one module that mimics that thing in uh, Hangouts. That, Whoever speak, it'll detect who's speaking and make that bigger. So that's just a, that's a, a module that you can use. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch over. I'm just going to walk you through the code. So the very first thing you need to do is grab the room name from the URL. It's going to have um, the way this is set up uh, so that you are in the same room with the person you want to be in the same room with is it just tags on a variable at the end of the URL. So it'll be question mark, you know, whatever the name, random room name is. 
and you just need to get that um, from the URL, and then you share that URL with whoever you want to talk to. They go to that same URL, and you're connected. Um, so the, the script needs to know what that is, so we'll grab that from the URL, and then we instantiate some WebRTC, and we pass in a few things like um, the DOM elements that, that's going to hold our video, the one that's going to hold the remote videos, because you can have more than one person. And it's basically just going to be a div, and every time a new person comes in, it's going to pop in a new video object into that div. Just kind of builds however many. Um, and then you want it to immediately ask for camera access. That's a variable. And we I just like to keep on logging. Then we listen for the WebRTC connection to be ready, and then join that room that we pulled from the URL. So WebRTC on, we'll, we'll trigger ready to call. And then when the connection is made, we will uh, go ahead and set up the room. And we're just doing using some jQuery here to, to adjust the UI. To, to show that we've connected. Then if a room does exist, we'll pass that room into the set room function. And if it doesn't exist yet, then we'll create one uh, based on what's entered in the form. So you can actually uh, name your own, uh, and then it puts it up in the URL. Now one thing I have not talked about yet is screen sharing. Screen sharing is supported in WebRTC, which is very exciting. Um, that's something we never did get with Flash. Um, what? No support for that. And uh, it's right now only supported in Chrome, unfortunately. But, uh, but that'll change. So, um, uh, you know, uh, Simple WebRTC has a bunch of stuff for screen sharing built in. So it will detect if you're in Chrome and allow it and so on. And one other thing with screen sharing is you have to have um, a secure connection. So it'll have to be on HTTPS you know, to, um, to be able to access the screen. And it's all encapsulated in this little WebRTC share screen. Everything's in there. Um, Simple WebRTC handles that, all that stuff for you under the surface. Same thing here. Um, just instantiating that handles a bunch of the, all of the peer connection stuff, all of that is handled um, by, the, by the framework. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Action. And see my really great UI here. <laughs> your connection, so this is grayed out. You can share the screen. Um, so, let's see, actually, you know when I jumped forward too fast, let me do this again. Oh, it is that, all right, sorry. Okay, cool, so, um, does anybody want to go on a device that wants to go to this? Let's see how it works on this network. Should pop in everybody on there. I'm not sure how, how secure your firewall is. Twice and you and 
Hey! <laughs> oh, look at that, we got a little phone. <laughs> so, one, two, three, five. We need to work on the scaling of it. Oh. Hey, you can hear me. I'm on speaker. <laughs> So, um, so it works pretty pretty well, and it's not very much code. Right, we got our demo for April. <laughs> okay. so, so what does this mean for Oko? <laughs> no microphone needed. What does this mean for like um, Skype? Does Skype like that? Is Skype that in two years? Uh, yeah, I mean, it really depends what Microsoft does with it. I mean, they've got a ton of people using Skype. You know, I, I don't know how um, my dad is going to feel about, you know, he knows how to use Skype. He knows how to, he knows that he can call me on Skype, are or they, on FaceTime for that matter. Are they invested in using WebRTC for Skype? They're very quiet about it. Okay. They're the ones that are holding back. Because I think that was why that they have, they have, um, their own ideas about how things should be structured. Um, given their whole infrastructure with Skype, I'm sure that they, they had their own ideas. Um, so it really is, uh, you know, they're going to have to hold on to the people that, that know Skype right now. We're going to have to add more features to it to stay competitive. It's not the only game in town now. Um, and they realize they can't fight that for very long, much longer. I mean, you know. They've, they've built it right into Windows 8.1, so it's just a, it's a tile now to just click on. Uh, so that, I think, will hold on to a bunch of people because it makes it easy. So it's sort of a stripped down version. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody says this is a Skype killer. It's, it, it'll be, I think it's just going to be more integrated into software and applications and websites, um, call centers and things like that, just looking at what Amazon has done um, with the Mayday button. You know, I think that's really a precursor to where things are going with this. <clears throat> so. so, like Hangouts on Android, that's using WebRTC too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hangouts is, yeah. Of course, they've got their own special sauce that they're not going to share with anybody, but, <laughs> but it is WebRTC based, yes. Um, and it, but it does work on um, across browsers. Um, so, they have, they, because they have a plugin. I don't know if you ever really noticed when you first used Hangouts, but you have to download that little plugin. Um, so, unfortunately, supposed to be plugin free uh, stuff isn't quite plugin free. So, this is really, really tiny. I have a um, URL. All this stuff is there. So, all the code examples, all my links, all my references, all that stuff is right at that page. Um, so yeah, it's basically these are some examples that you can play around with. Um, basically anything by Sam Dutton is a good place to start. Um, I just struggled with a lot of those examples because I didn't have this first, okay, what is the API, what, what can it do, what are the parts, where, why are, how does stun in turn fit into the picture, all of that. So that part was hard for me to grasp a lot of these examples, but um, they're out there to get started with. Oh, webrtc-experiment.com, Was Khan, amazing stuff. He's playing, he's got tons of open source examples, including um, the first known video recording using WebRTC. Um, he's got some scripts for that, which um, he's got uh, open source for anybody. Ton of experiments and stuff that uh, nobody else is doing, so it's worth checking out. And um, I was talking, and I think about the, there's actually a real a printed book on WebRTC that is already in its third edition. They just keep, I don't know, it's constant revisions <laughs> because the, the spec is not finished yet. Um, but it's helpful, you know, it does uh, lay out much <laughs> of this stuff for you, but it is very technical. So if you need that technical end of things, you're, you're communicating with, sophisticated back-end um, systems, go ahead and get the book. Um, else, and then, um, you know, WebRTC really is on the leading edge. 
um, even though Brendan is no longer there. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, uh, he was saying that you know, it's the bleeding edge of web technologies right now. This is, uh, it's really going to be integrated into many different applications in creative ways that we haven't even thought about yet. Um, so you're pioneers learning this right now. Um, but there was a study that was just released saying that there will be 6.2 billion endpoints by 2018 uh, that support WebRTC. So this is going to be all sorts of an array of devices and browsers and all sorts of things. Um, and markets such as financial services, healthcare insurance are really interested in this for other customer service. Um, I've been doing a lot of consulting in that area, financial services especially. Uh, they're of course concerned about um, the uh, security of it, so that's still up, up in the air, but they're very interested in even internal communications and things like that, getting, getting all of this integrated. And um, WebRTC World Outlook 2014 summary says, <laughs> um, at, at, I think this was at, at um, Santa Clara, you, you uh, talked to all the people that came to the conference, and um, the survey says that the biggest barrier is lack of awareness. Um, of course, then there's not supported by Microsoft, not supported by Apple. Um, but we talked about that. It's happening. Um, but a lack of awareness. People just don't know about that, about what it can do and um, how fast it really is evolving. So I kind of take it as my personal mission to get out there and tell everybody. Yes. So congratulations. Now you know about WebRTC. Um, I, I hope you feel a little bit less intimidated by it and, um, and a whole lot more fired up about what you can do with it and, and maybe have some new ideas. Um, so I would love to see what you guys do with it, um, what kind of things you play around with, different ideas. If you have any questions at all, um, if I don't know, I can find out. <laughs> Uh, I did bring some free passes. I've got a course up on uh, Pluralsight. Uh, I don't, how many people have used Pluralsight or know about it? Oh, people. Yeah, so it's like a, uh, their tagline is hardcore developer training. Um, I also have done courses for Linda, which is not that. <laughs> um, they do have developer courses on Linda, but I do um, more video related stuff um, on there, like video players and so on. Uh, but on Pluralsight, I have a course that covers most of the stuff I talked about, plus more, um, specifically on WebRTC. And I've got cards up here with free, a free month, or um, a free month to try out any courses you want to. I would learn if you would watch mine. <laughs> um, so you should grab you know, one or two of those. There's plenty there. I also have some Linda, Linda passes, too. Just in that. And um, thank you. Yes, yeah, so the question is you can share video, audio, your screen. Could you share live video? Um, <clears throat> you could share, uh, is it like broadcasting to a bunch of people? Yeah, like a big broadcast. Um, yeah, that's one thing that everybody wants to do, but it's not easy to do because it's peer-to-peer. -peer. So there needs to be a server involved there. Um, as of, you know, unless, until you have that kind of you know, server that will ingest uh, a stream over a peer connection in um, and then out to a bunch of people without it hitting your particular machine. <laughs> um, we don't have that right now. Um, you could use Flash for that. I mean, yeah. you know, that's what's that's what that's what's like pre-recorded something that's pre-recorded. Um, it would still have to come from a server that has capacity because otherwise it's all going to come from you. You could distribute that. You could you could do a um, a distributed load. So. Um, it could come from one person to a peer, and then another peer could get it from that peer or this peer, and you could distribute distribute that. So that is possible to do it that way, kind of create this big mesh of, um, of sharing. Yeah? What type of uh, 
hardware has interfaces that are supported for uh, accessing video, even if it's just peer to peer, like um, webcam video, fine. But what, what other types of hardware devices have supported interfaces? Um, so the question is what kind of hardware interfaces have support um, where you could take in a, a feed and send it out over WebRTC? Um, I mean, really, it's getting to the browser. <laughs> it's a trick. So it's whatever, um, you know, because you could do S video in, you could do converters and things on to get it onto the computer um, and then out um, <coughs> the internet that way. Um, it would have to be running um, a WebRTC compatible browser, is really, and, and then any kind of feed that could come in that could be read in the browser and detected by the browser as an input source would then be sent out. So I don't think that answers exactly what, you, what the question is, because you really want to know if this is going to work in you know, your Arduinos, all the other devices and things. Um, so right now, it needs to be in the browser. So it's whatever interface it needs to go into there. But, um, but I know that is an area that I'm interested in too, is the machine to machine and, and you know, hooking up some different interfaces to it. Um, so, uh, so I'll look into it. Got your card. We had a question here earlier. Yep. If it's open source and it sends all the over encryption, does that mean it's using open as itself? It's um good question. What was the question? The question is if it's all encrypted, um, is it using open SSL? Um, no, it, I know that it's not um, susceptible to heartbeat. I know that. Um, so it's using um, a different form of encryption, but I have to look it up. I don't know what it's called. So. Um, well done. Yeah, you <laughs> stunned me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. You mentioned this technology is waiting for a killer app to kind of blow up. What? I mean, you're one of the forefront thinkers of it. What's the killer app going to be? <laughs> if I knew that, I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, um, we're waiting for a killer app. What's the killer app? Um, I don't think it's going to be a Skype killer, that's for sure. It's going to be something completely different. Um, uh, I think you know May Day is a, is a first step. I think it's going to be something that's really integrated in to our our daily lives that makes something super easy that wasn't easy before. Um, that just makes that kind of real time communication seamless because that's really the power of this. Is um, it really can be integrated and you can communicate with so many different devices with your phone, with you know, landlines, and um, you know, sending data and all sorts of things. That, um, that you couldn't do before. So I think it's going to be something that makes life easier, but I don't know exactly what that is yet. Mm -hmm. Yes? Well, somebody else first, I think. I've actually answered my own question. You answered your own question? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to share? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned, just you just said landlines. How does that work? It, um, uh, there are... Um, Interfaces so that you can connect. Oh, you with meant the PSTN thing. Right? The PSTN, okay, yes. Yeah, you can connect to plain telephone networks. Okay. Um, uh, you, know, you can connect using using SIP as well, so you can get into those legacy networks, which um, is why we're stuck with that SDP, that horrible, ugly, big chunk of data, uh, is because it's compatible with the old systems mm -hmm. and the telecommunications people are the ones who are really involved in this right now. They're the ones that are showing up to WebRTC World and um, really build, you know, looking at um, building this into their infrastructures. And so they're driving a lot of that technology, which is another reason why I want to get developers more involved. So we can start, because it still is an open standard and it's still being developed that we could kind of have a little bit of, of say in how some of these things are structured. So how do we get WebRTC World to, to sponsor a hackathon? 
<laughs> ask the RTC world for you. <laughs> Any other Great questions? Else.